Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite podcast, Stop the Internet Podcast. I'm Kelly. I'm Rebecca. We just got word <gasps> that Rebecca has received verified fan access to the second leg of the U.S. tour for Taylor Swift, the Eras tour. Yes. <laughs> that was a lot of words that I just said. <laughs> but it's all was that a sentence? accurate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We were about to record and then we just got set back about 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> we had to debrief and plan. It is like insane. Can I just like kind of rant about something that I was yes. talking about with my family over the weekend, actually? Mm -hmm. I get that inflation is a thing, but ticket prices as a whole for events, especially concerts, have skyrocketed in the past two years, in my opinion, and it is absurd. It's like, so bad. I remember on Reputation Tour, it was when I was a senior in college, I remember seeing the prices of her tour, and it's like, it wasn't selling out in two seconds like it is now. Yeah. You actually had a few minutes to be able to purchase tickets, and they were so expensive, but looking back, they were probably probably like 150 or like $200 maybe oh, 250 or 300 piece? yeah for floor seats though like oh, front floor yeah yeah like yeah, front yeah. row on the floor would be like $300 or like 250 yeah. and then the lower levels would probably be in the 100s and then the upper levels i forget i think i paid like probably 75 for the upper levels yeah okay yeah I remember thinking those were crazy at the time. Yeah. Because a normal concert was like $50. Mm -hmm. Like a stadium tour would have been $50. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it almost like makes me a little bit sad because you look at these like celebrities and athletes, especially, and you go to like a Phillies game or an NFL game and you're like, a beer is $21. A hot dog is $9. And then you're like, this guy's worth, like his contract is worth $10 million a season. And it's like, yeah, and we're freaking paying it yeah. in the prices of all this stuff. I wonder, is that true? Are we really? I think at, at least part of it. Huh. I know that obviously the profit margins of the stadiums are, I don't know, like they're also making a lot of profit. But I just feel like where else is that money coming from? Is it I, just coming from advertising on like the NFL channel? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's all tied in Maybe. somehow. All yeah. It's a giant pool of cash and they're yeah. just... <laughs> I think it is because if you, I was also thinking about how Taylor can choose which stadiums she plays in and she's choosing the link. And I feel like other stadiums have to be like almost like propositioning her and like, here's mm. what you'll get if you choose our venue. And then I think also part of that is like it seats the most in this city. Yeah. But I think there's definitely a reason why they pick and choose certain stadiums. Yeah. And I feel like it has to be about like, I don't know. I just can't imagine that Taylor is going to the link being like the link by the way is the football stadium in Philadelphia if you didn't know I can't imagine she's going there and like asking them if she can play there like I feel like they also have to give her something in return it's almost like Maybe. a business meeting where they're like what are we gonna work out like how is this gonna I at least for someone of her level but I think now because she's been touring there since speak now when you think about it yeah so like I'm sure now it's just so ironed out yeah and but it's also like there's no way she would ever play non-stadium tour now i agree but i guess what i'm thinking is like let's say a brand new stadium opened up in philadelphia or like 30 minutes outside the city that was the same size she's been playing at the link like i wouldn't be surprised if a new stadium went to her and they were like you if you play at our stadium you can have a hundred percent of the profits from concessions mm -hmm. and i feel like i've heard that at newer stadiums like in Vegas and stuff for oh. not concerts or maybe concerts as well but like other sports games or something they're like we'll give you all the concession profits for the next 50 years if you sign a contract with us yeah I and that's how they like win their business mm -hmm. I could see that happening in a place like Vegas or even LA but I feel like Philly that would never happen yeah I guess I just think like in general like there's a reason why it costs so much and like why they're mm -hmm. I but feel like that has more to do with Ticketmaster than the stadiums does it because wells fargo well yeah not the stadiums but okay yes you're right like i think with the um because there's like a lawsuit with you know if, if it was contingent on the stadiums i think there would be they would be involved in the lawsuit that's currently going on with ticketmaster and taylor and the fans or something like isn't it a cla class action with ticketmaster right now i think it is 
But the stadium still has to have a deal with Ticketmaster because they're the ones that are accepting these tickets that are being sold. I feel like they Mm -hmm. all have skin in the game. But like the point that I'm getting at (laughs) is I paid so much money. I don't even want to admit how much money I paid (laughs) to go to this Ares tour. It's okay. It's an it's (laughs) insane to me. Yeah. And like thinking about concerts that I went to years ago, like pre covid not Taylor Swift, but it was actually $50 I know. to get into a concert. And now a concert, it's like if a ticket for the floor is $300 or $400, you're like, yeah, that's average. Totally. What? I know. How are people buying that? I know. That's too much. It's, hopefully, um, if we do get in on this pre-sale or this on-sale for her second leg, we will see normal prices. I the sure problem hope so. was the fluctuating Ticketmaster whole shebang. I will say that was the problem for this tour. But the reputation tour was also, in my opinion, like three times the yeah. price of a different concert. But just because mm-hmm. it was Taylor, it was so expensive. Yeah. But I guess also they have to pay for like the set, and it's such a huge production. So there are so many salaries that they have to pay. So maybe that's why her tickets just cost more in general. I don't know. I don't know. I ended up going to the reputation tour and I was gifted a ticket because my friend's mom actually won them in a charity auction. Fun. So they were very expensive, but I was just like blessed to receive one as a gift. But anyway, it was one ninety five. It was like because that was when the tickets still were printed yeah. with the price. Yeah. And it said one ninety five on it for like the club level. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that is still crazy to me. For 2018, yeah, I guess so. But club level is tends to be as expensive as floor because you get the private oh, bathroom. that's a good point. And the food and all that stuff. Yeah. But, oh my God, I would love to do club for if we get this second leg. Really? I think would you rather be- do that or the floor? Um, Probably at this age, the club. <laughs> Wow. I just want to be close to her. I've never Actually, been yeah. close to her. Me like, either. Like, there are people that are this far, maybe not this far anymore, because the, it's also yeah. interesting seeing every tour. The pit gets, well, no, the pit doesn't get smaller, but the space between her and the pit or the first row gets bigger and I bigger, know. and there's more and more security. Yeah. And it is insane to think that in the past, people were touching the stage. Yeah, so close. Crazy. Actually, that's a good point, because she doesn't even have a pit which I guess would be like the thing I'm hung up on. So we have seats like, yeah, yeah, I'll do floor. Frick it. Although Eris tour, the seats that were not on the floor probably had a better view because the stage was such an immersive part of the show. But we've already seen it. Yeah, true. I just want to be close to her. Like I want to see what her eyes look like. I was going to say I'm I'm getting fed these TikToks of people like making eye contact with her. Yeah. I'm just like, wow. I know. Imagine you in that moment, she just locks eyes. Sometimes I think that I'm not that crazy. And then I'll be on TikTok and I'll see a video of her where I'm thinking of a specific one, but the person's in the front row and she's singing Cruel Summer and Mm -hmm. it's like, it's cool. And then the, in the next second, the fog machines like spray up and she does the like, flails her body backwards and then she immediately stands up again. That's what I tell them. I started tearing up. I don't know why. Why? Because you could literally yeah. hear the smoke machines going off and she's just so like real and she's right there. And it's she's like doing it. It's, it's just is shocking. I'm like, why am I crying over this? Like, it's overwhelming. I know. She's so talented. I know. <laughs> we always find a way to talk about Taylor. I know. I think that there are a lot of Swifties. Maybe not a lot, but there is there are at least a few Swifties in our community. Yes. So <laughs> If you know, you know. (laughs) Do you have any other life updates? Sorry, I totally stole this intro. That was the biggest one today. Yeah, true. Um, no, I mean I've been listening listening to folklore a lot. Something about August, late summer vibe. I mean, technically it's not even late summer if you're going by the calendar. But you know, it just feels like that hazy autumn like mood. And I'm deep in it, you guys. Do you ever take a long drive through woods and Betty is playing? 
like no but it sounds magical i think you should all do it it sounds magical i transcended i was never i was just She's speechless to, i was just trying to think of what i was gonna say and i stared into space for five minutes i wasn't a huge betty fan until when was it i don't even know but then i realized how hype it was and i was like no more sleeping on this song yeah i showed up at your party and then when she says when you kiss me will it be just like i dreamed it come again please what is this <laughs> please yeah i showed up at it's your so party good. it's so good okay should we start it yeah i think we should start it <laughs> although so i can't awkward. I'm I sorry. Can't, <laughs> no it wasn't <laughs> awkward we're still learning transitions today we're talking about birthdays and big events and kind of how like friendships and social media play a role in these friend group events Mm -hmm. and I feel like I just have a lot of opinions on this I have a lot to say good okay let's just jump right in (laughs) (laughs) wonderful Are birthdays important to you? This person just turned 30, didn't really do anything for their birthday, went out for breakfast and hung out with his girlfriend. Felt like any other day, really. I don't know. I guess I just feel jaded about it. What's your hot take? I love the way that was written. (laughs) I guess I just feel jaded about it. That's kind of sad. Yeah, because if you feel jaded, then maybe it is important to you and you're learning it the hard way. Shoot. (laughs) Sorry. Wait, that's kind of true. But maybe you're also getting caught up with societal norms, especially since you just turned 30 and you're like, well, shoot, I should have done something huge because I'm 30. So really listen to what your heart is telling you is, is right. Yeah, that's a good point. I love birthdays. I feel like I didn't start doing big group events until the past year or two. Mm -hmm. And I feel like before that, I was always very low key. But once I started doing the bigger things, and by bigger things, I just mean inviting all of my close friends out to like a bar or a happy hour and then going to the bar later. Once I started doing something like that, I'm like, this is so fun. Hmm. And it doesn't even have to just be about you. This year, we did karaoke for my birthday. Rebecca wasn't there. I was in Italy, y'all. Actually, funny (laughs) story. (laughs) Funny story. (laughs) Rebecca's birthday party was in early January and I couldn't go because I had a destination wedding and then my yes. birthday was in April and you couldn't go because you had a destination wedding. We switch a route each other. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> that is crazy. We're just world travelers over here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was her revenge. She planned a destination wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait. I'm so sorry. I have to. I hate doing this. I have to discipline you. I'm sorry. Wait, but it's not even making any noise. Jeez, it was when it was hitting the thing, but other than that, it's okay, fine. Okay, I'll just... No, t- you can hold it. <laughs> you can hold it. Just try to not hit it into the couch. I'm sorry. You can do it. I'm sorry. I don't want to be the bad guy. <laughs> it's okay. I'll just- but our intern, he's going to struggle with the editing. <laughs> Kenny? Kenny. <laughs> He was giving me a signal. He was like, there's some weird sound happening on the monitor. Anyway. (laughs) We missed each other's birthdays, long story short. We did. Oh, what I was going to say is we did karaoke, the we being me and my other friends. (laughs) And it was so much fun. And it wasn't just about me. Mm -hmm. Like everyone sung karaoke and everyone had fun, I think. (laughs) I hope. But yeah. it ended up being very, very expensive. Because yeah. those private karaoke rooms where you get your own couch and everyone piles into one room, those things are expensive. But in my opinion, it was worth it. I'm everyone sure it seemed was. to have fun. Everyone seemed to have fun. I'm sure I was, like real. birthdays. I feel like let's do it up. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do you feel about birthdays? Uh, I'm somewhere in the middle, I guess, because up until I was 26, yeah, I had only ever had maybe like three friend birthday parties and most of them were when I was a child. Like I just didn't care to do like a big friend thing. I would Mm -hmm. always just hang out with like my siblings on my birthday. And then as I got older and I think it started when I was 22 or 23 
and it was just like my sister and I and we would go into Philly and like one year we got a hotel room and it was so fun and we like went to a cute speak easy if you're in Philly it's Charlie was a sinner which is not that like oh. profound now but at the time it was just popping off and we did that and just like got really dressed up I made her do a photo shoot of me in the hotel room <laughs> in my sequence dress as you should and then 25 I did a similar thing in Philly with my sibs 26 was COVID and then 27 was like my first year doing a friend party as an adult and to be honest this was last year so not this most recent year it it wasn't like it was fun but it really gave me anxiety and stressed me out a little because I'm not someone that like enjoys group things and it has nothing to do with who was there at all like these are like some of my closest friends but for me it just stresses me out to be a host for like people in different friend groups maybe mm -hmm. or like being the glue that holds people together that's not like my strong suit I have a lot of like one-off friendships I guess that don't really intermix so this year I kind of just kept it to people that all know each other and like already hang out yeah which I felt like excluded people and then I felt bad I don't know like you can't win you guys unless you're rich and can like literally rent out a whole restaurant for all of your friends and your family like what do you do yeah or if it's just like oh we're all gonna go to this bar at the same yeah. time and it's not really going to be a party. It's just going to be like people gathering mm -hmm. and we all know each other. But even that is like way more chill than a lot of people do yeah. for their birthday. And I think that would stress me out even more because it's almost too relaxed. So then like what if people don't come and then you just feel like, oh, does no one care about me? So this year I have no idea Sad. what to do. If you have an answer for me, let me know. Because my apartment is like 700 square feet. So keep that in mind. I feel like the birthday thing... <laughs> well, I'll just use my sister as an example. The past two years, she wanted to go away for her birthday. And in a weird way, it makes it easier mm -hmm. because when you plan a long weekend trip and you just open the invite to all of your friends, a few of the people who are into traveling and who you're really close with will want to go and will probably be able to go. And then anyone else just doesn't go. And then you only have to deal with five people instead of like everyone yeah. you've ever met. Mm -hmm. And then people being like, why wasn't I invited? Or like, blah, 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 blah. Like people don't have to wonder why. Why they're not invited like maybe if there's people that you're closer with where you're like yeah if everyone was just casually going to a bar I would tell them but I'm not going to invite them on a trip right if you do a trip then you really only have to deal with the few people that go <laughs> it's easier yeah but it is way more expensive and then it's like I don't know also doing a trip is a luxury yeah which many people can't do I don't know Especially, it's so yeah. it's so stressful it's so hard but at the same time, it's like people could be like, it's really not stressful. Just don't do anything. But like you're allowed to want to do something for your birthday. Yeah, because for me and my thought this year, too, was like one of my favorite, if not my favorite thing to do is go out to eat. Like I just love dining. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my thought this year was like getting a group together to go to one of my favorite re restaurants. And then in theory, it's better than it is in practice because like, well, I don't know. This year was fun, but it's also like you don't get to talk to everyone the same Right. Because at a table with 10-ish people, you're going to have someone at this end. And if you're even in the middle, it's like you still have to shout over them in a crowded restaurant to talk yeah. to them. So I guess like I don't know that I would love to do that again. Again, like what do you do then? If you have a small space, which I do. I don't know. Oh, ice skating. Cute. That would be fun. Let's bring it back to elementary school days when you had an ice skating with your whole class and then you rented a room, which I'm sure is not even that much money, and you order pizza. Oh my God. Let's do that. Should I do that? Because yes. I have a winter birthday. That sounds so fun. Oh my God. Okay. Wait, oh my God. I'd I really love will. to do that. Yeah. Because ice skating is like $10. And you don't have to like host because everyone's preoccupied with skating. <laughs> and skating is so much fun. And wow. also there are... There are places in Philly that are outside, and if yes. you didn't want to skate, they have the little, like, lounge and everything. So you okay. could still have fun, even if you don't like ice skating. Do you think people would come, though? Yeah. I mean, I would. Okay. That's all that matters, baby. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's go. That would be so fun. Um, that would be so fun. I like. That Actually, idea. I do think a, a lot of my friends would come. I have good friends. They would. They would come for me. Yeah. <laughs> Rise. Also, if you don't even like ice skating, you can still have fun at the places that exist in Philly. Mm-hmm. They are still fun to go to, even if you don't ice skate. I think that's okay, a great good. idea. Did I just figure it out? Yay! Oh. Skating party, and we can all dress up as professional figure skaters. Oh my God! Think of the film pick. They would be. so so cool and i could get a really cute outfit i think we have to okay yay i'll start planning this is so exciting my birthday's not until december but it's never too early i feel like we have a good range right now of how we're gonna go into the rest of this episode because i feel like we both understand people that care a lot about it but we both realize that it's also not the biggest day of your life and like (laughs) It's fine if it doesn't work out. It's like you're 24 or like you're 27. Like this is not one of the greatest days of your life. You're so 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 right. It's fine. It's all gonna be fine. Yeah. Even if only three people show up. I'm turning 29. It's it's fine. Now 30, I might cry myself to sleep. No. If that happened. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just kidding. Mm -mm. (laughs) 30, I I kinda wanna do what this guy did and literally like go have pancakes somewhere. Oh no, we're having a blowout. I don't I don't know if I can handle that. You guys, my social anxiety sometimes. It just be flaring. Maybe we'll have a live show on your birthday. Like, oh my god, actually? Okay. That'd be fun. Okay. Okay. Should we get into a story? Yeah. The shape of your body is blue. So the next story comes from myself. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, there's so many iterations of this story that I'm like, we don't need everyone's details. Let's get down to the, the moral of the story, which is, am I the asshole for not posting on Instagram on my friend's special day? And in my mind, I'm like, a special day could be a birthday, a wedding, a baby shower, a bridal shower. I feel like those are the big ones that people expect. An engagement party, maybe. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Something yeah. like life-changing, not just like, oh, we're going out on Friday yeah. with a bunch of our friends. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> I I don't want to say these things don't matter because we simply live in an age where they do matter. Like yeah. social media matters to a certain extent. And I think you're not obligated as a friend or let's say it's a wedding. You're not obligated even as a bridesmaid or a groomsman to post for that person's shower, engagement party, wedding. Like, isn't it enough to just show up in person? <laughs> I feel like it's so weird with Instagram. Like there are so many layers when it comes to like what people choose to post. And I think that a lot of people People post because they feel like they have to and then a lot of times people post because they want to prove something they want to show how good of a friend they are to this yes. person maybe if they feel like I mean I know that sometimes that comes from being genuine but I know it also sometimes comes from insecurity and you want to like show off this friendship and how close you are with them and I just agree that like I don't think you ever need to post and I never sit around on like my birthday or whatever and I'm like oh I hope this person posts an Instagram Instagram story that their friends are gonna see of me when we don't even know each other like right I just think the posting thing is kind of getting out of hand Mm -hmm. I have kind of a personal story so my friend's friend had a baby shower my friend went and wasn't in a lot of the group photos and wasn't in any of the group photos that the the new mom Mom to be (laughs) the mom to be I'm like it's not a bride the mom to be posted and then their other friends asked why my friend didn't go to the baby shower and if she was still friends with the new mom but that's what like yeah (laughs) that's what I mean it's like because you didn't post on Instagram you're suddenly not friends and you suddenly didn't even go yes like we've come to that point in this in this world it's literally Pixar didn't happen yeah that's wild I know I just think that the posting thing is like kind of irrelevant because what if you genuinely just didn't get pictures yeah like sometimes that happens you're so in the moment a party like that is like so hectic you might not have had a chance to pull the mom aside and be like can we get a quick pic like maybe that's I don't know unrealistic because I do think at these events there's always time reserved for pictures now but like maybe you didn't like how you looked in them no I think it's kind of realistic I'm thinking of my cousin's wedding that I was in a few years ago and it was so much fun and I had a blast the entire day yeah 
I actually spent most of my energy, my own, not like my own time, but like I wasn't getting Instagram pictures. Any moment I had, I was getting vlog footage for a vlog I was making and I okayed that with her prior to filming it. But looking back, I didn't take any one-on-one -on -one photos with my cousin, the bride, on my phone. Like the photographer got the professional one of us, but then I didn't have any that were her and I, either like a mirror pic or like just nothing. Yeah. And I got a few selfies with some of the other bridesmaids with, I think with my family, I forget, but I didn't post anything on my story because I was at this party and just like living it up on the dance floor. I'm just not even thinking about Instagram. And then the next day I just didn't think to post on Instagram and mm -hmm. I realized that I never did. And I don't think she even noticed, nor would she care. Yeah. But I feel like the benefits of posting is that it's like a memory because mm -hmm. then sometimes it comes up in your archive or like you can save it on your highlights or whatever so looking back I'm like damn I wish I had photos to post but I'm also like good thing she's not psycho and it wasn't like questioning me as to why I didn't post and I'm like oh so sorry I was living in the moment and yeah. then didn't think about it you know days yeah. later I was just looking at the photos on my phone and then also at that time I didn't even really use Instagram stories as much I feel like I've used it way more in the past like year and a half I use it a lot I like it now I still yeah. don't I still wouldn't say I use it a lot I don't think you even use it a lot I feel like I do and this is like the problem I run into when I feel like I post a lot even if I just go to a cool restaurant I typically will post so I feel like I'm in my head about if I go to to a big event and I don't post but I post all these other times like on sips or something I'm like posting up a storm but then if I go to someone's birthday party and I don't post like is that bad I really don't think so because I'm okay. thinking about my birthday party from this year and a few people posted pictures from it but I wasn't like why didn't this person vote like I just yeah. don't think like that I don't know maybe I'm just in my head too much but in a way I feel I do feel maybe I am I am the problem I feel obligated to post sometimes for people's things and like but I also like if I'm looking at my phone and I'm looking through my pictures which I do quite a lot and I see a cute pic like I do want to post it but there have definitely been times this year where I've been like I guess I should post yeah and maybe in those moments I should ask myself why do I feel this way who am I doing this for it's not that deep like all those things I feel like the who am I doing this for is the question because mm -hmm. it's like are you doing it for yourself but then again at the same time it's like so <laughs> much deeper than that because then you could be like if my friend really loves when people think of her and like always says like oh my god that person posted on their story for me like that's so nice like they really went out of their way like you genuinely know that they appreciate it yeah it's like can you do something that you just don't feel like doing because your best friend you know that she'll appreciate it mm -hmm. but then I know the other side of that is like you can do so many things for her like why does it have to be a public display of like friendship and yeah posting but sometimes too I think about this more with birthdays like I went through a period where I was not posting like happy birthday Sally <laughs> for years in a row because one year I think 2019 or 18 I did it for like all of my close friends and then I was like are we just gonna be doing this until the end of time oh yeah and then it's like I don't know I got in my head about that and I'm like you know I'm just not gonna post at all anymore more for people's birthdays and then this year I started doing it again <laughs> just for like I think I literally did it for Katie and maybe I did it for her last year and like one other person I can't even remember but sometimes I'm like I have so many pictures with this person that yeah. I have never seen the light of day they're so cute and it's more about just that like I just yeah. want to like put these pictures somewhere it's not even like oh well I didn't post for this person so I can't post for this person but it's like I stopped thinking that way so much and I think I'm gonna start just like cherry picking my birthday posts because yeah. like I don't know does it even matter I mean it matters to some people but it's kind of annoying that it matters like it's yeah. kind of annoying that you have to like search through your Facebook memories or like I know. your archives of photos and be like well which photo does she look good in that but I, know I find that like, fun like, Okay. Then. That's like, I guess, 
like I was just trying like I enjoy looking through old pics oh then I feel like in a way so no like pressure like next weekend for example I have a good friend's birthday and I'm like I think I'm gonna post for that but um, should I feel bad that I didn't post for like someone else's birthday that was three weeks ago or something you know what I mean I don't think so I think that the people that are thinking about this and getting mad about this have something else going on yeah because I really don't think about this with my friends that are good friends to me all the time yeah and I feel like if people People who I wasn't that close with posted about my birthday I'd be like what like what are you trying to prove like See, I've had that happen to me too out. I know yeah I don't know you guys there's no correct answer I think we're all figuring it out as we go through like this age of social media yeah and I liked what you said about like social media like we can sit here and people can comment or in like random conversations people can say social media doesn't even matter but you're right it does matter it's like it is just how people stay in touch and how people a lot of people communicate friendship like it just is a it's just a fact that it's something that exists in our lives and it means something to many people the reason why it means something may be something deeper but it does mean something to a lot of people and that's fine and it can be really good and really um not so good yeah (laughs) like I think this is a great example what we're talking about because I think showing like a public display of affection whether it be who you're dating or your friends can be so just like joyous and you're just so excited to be at someone's wedding or to be at someone's birthday but then the flip side can also be true where like if that person really cares about that kind of thing and they wake up the next morning and they're like no one posted from my birthday party or my wedding wedding I don't think would ever happen to be honest like yeah not anymore yeah but like birthday could happen where it's like damn like only one person like posted a birthday tribute so maybe I don't know but I feel like that's insecurity if all these people went to your birthday party or wished you a happy birthday one-on-one if you are so sad that they aren't showing it to other people Mm -hmm. then why like that's insecurity yeah I think I just think it happens though a lot oh yeah I'm sure it does and so uh, yeah I don't know how to get around that (laughs) as I I mean I feel like as a collective like how we get around that I mean not like us yeah Yeah, totally. I saw this quote recently that was, what your life feels like is more important than what your life looks like. Mm. And I feel like that's just important (laughs) for all of social media. So like, if you're not killing it on the Instagram grid and having all these pictures of your friend's birthday and your friends posting your birthday and whatever, if you are happy in life, what your life feels like is more important than what it looks like. That is so true. Yeah, so true. that kind of like stopped me in my tracks and I was like, yeah, not that I care that much about Instagram, but I do find myself thinking about it sometimes where I'm like, oh, I haven't posted in a while. Like I should probably post or there are certain things that I'm like, oh, I want to post this on my story. And then I'm like, why do I want to post this on my story? Mm-hmm. Is it because I want to seem cool or mm-hmm. is it just because I genuinely think this thing is cool? And I kind of feel like it's a little bit of a, a little bit of bit both. Of both. Yeah. To be completely honest. Same. Like there are times I'm not going to lie. This is like kind of embarrassing, but like there have definitely been times where I've posted specific things because I'm like oh like this makes me feel cool or like people will think this is cool yeah same (laughs) (laughs) so like but I see I don't know is that bad I guess it is this is the problem I don't think it's always so bad like I enjoy aesthetics I enjoy curating my own private Instagram aesthetic so like it's just fun yeah like I'm not always doing it to be like oh like look at this cool shot I got but like film for example I typically post my film pictures on my stories when I get them developed which is about like once a month I would say and it's just like fun oh I love the film drop days yeah they're like, so fun I just find it like part of my brand and not in a toxic way but those aren't things that you're posting because you're like oh I want to impress someone true you're just posting them because you genuinely love them and you're like I want more people to see these amazing photos that I took like yeah. that's not and it's like insecurity. your own yeah yeah and it's like your own personal archive too yeah which is nice to have because on a digital well I don't know if this is true actually but I think it's true it's like digital so it's always gonna be there unless Instagram ceases to exist yeah. <laughs> in our lifetime but I was thinking about this I used to have <laughs> 
TBT to the days where you would just post 150 photos on Facebook from an event and not even call through them. And just every single picture that was posted is now on Facebook in an album. Yeah. Crazy. But there was a time where a lot of my pictures from high school or even like family vacations in high school, I would put them on Facebook and that was the only place that they existed. And I'm like, wait, that's so bad because people think that they own Facebook and like Mm -hmm. they think they own Instagram or YouTube or whatever. And just know that at any time it can shut down and it can be taken away from you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it because you don't own this thing Mm -hmm. you are it's true you are almost like a guest here yeah when it comes to these platforms like they don't owe you shit you are agreeing to their terms so don't ever use instagram as or facebook as your like end all be all like this is where i save all of my most treasured photos like yeah no no get them onto the cloud somewhere we were just talking about this. Yeah. I I had some techie thoughts for Kelly last yeah. week. I just think it, I, as a photographer and someone who just loves photos, like I genuinely think that photos and videos are the most valuable, tangible thing there is. Yeah. And they can never be replaced. Yeah. So I'm I'm always backing up. I need to back in up. multiple places. Yeah. I need to do that. Yeah. By EOM, end of month. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Ooh, potential spam is calling me. Yeet. That was such a lively discussion. I know. Here's another one. Am I the asshole for not inviting my friend's husband to my birthday party? Okay, so I turned 21 tomorrow and I'm having a party on Saturday to celebrate. I invited a good amount of people, but my mom needed a list of approximately how many people are coming for how much food she's going to cook and how many drinks my dad needs to get. Plus, my house is not big at all. So I invited five of my aunts and seven of my friends. However, I texted one of the seven friends saying, hey, I'm having my 21st birthday party on Saturday and I'd really enjoy it if you came. So she texts back, okay, we'll be there. I'm just thinking, who's we? Then I asked her what she meant by that and if she was referring to her and her husband, she says yes. I had to break it to her that there's only a certain amount of people allowed to come over because I already have a list planned out. Plus, there's not going to be any guys at the party except my dad and I'm sure my friend's husband would feel out of place. I have absolutely nothing against the guy. He's chill and has always been nice to me, but like I said, there's only so many people that can come. I asked my friend to please not be mad. She texted me back, giving me a little bit of attitude. She said, I'm not mad. I'm just upset because when you gave me the invitation, I automatically assumed you meant me and my husband could come. So I had to break it down to her and say, dude, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but if I wanted to invite you and your husband, I would have said, I want you and him or both of y'all in the invite. But I just said you. It's not that I have anything against him. It's just that I invited you only and that's it. I sent her that text and she hasn't answered. Am I the asshole in this situation? I mean, not to be that person but my god it's my party my list and everything what the heck do i do i feel like you're not no i don't think so either this is like i mean the stakes are lower it being a birthday but it's like at a wedding if you assume you have a plus one Mm -hmm. in a way and i just don't think you can ever assume those things because yeah like unless it says and guest same with a birthday like i'd love if you and your husband came you can't assume that he's invited yeah i feel like that's actually very clear Like when I just think if I was in a relationship, I've never been married, but if I got a text about a party, I would be like, are we bringing dates or is it just girls? Yeah. Or I would say like, are boyfriends going? Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't think I would just assume that my husband was invited. Yeah. Maybe she thinks the rules don't apply to her because they are married, but I still don't think in this situation that matters. Like, yeah. At what point do you have to bring or do you have to extend the invite to partners? I I wonder. I think that's such an interesting I do think it correlates with age. I really do. I do too because that has happened to like a lot of people in mine and my sister's lives where now that they're in serious relationships, they're always with this other person. And we kind of both realize we're like, oh, so certain people are just at the point where they are now a package deal. Yeah. And it's as if like when you're married, you just do things together. And it's just so weird to see that at such a young age or like with people you've known your whole life and you're like okay I will never see them just them anymore Mm -hmm. like they will always be with their boyfriend and if these two people get married their husband yeah and it's almost like kind of sad but I do think that there's a time and a place where you can see 
them separate. Mm -hmm. And I feel like an all girls birthday party is a perfect example of one of those things. Especially when you're 21. Oh, yeah. I think there's going to come a time in life where maybe that's a little less acceptable in some circles. Maybe not in every, but like, I don't know, in your 40s, I guess. Yeah, like like my parents. Like my mom is not getting invited places unless it's specifically from a girlfriend or a sister who's saying, hey, I'm planning a girls event. I'm thinking all the girls should just get out. Leave the guys at home. Like one of the those things but yeah typically people that are married are once once you reach a certain age are not getting just like a just you're allowed to come and your husband is not allowed to come right but we're kind of in that in-between point yeah for a while like I I even think into your 30s it becomes like oh it's still a little ambiguous because yeah it's like someone could be with their person for many years and not be married right and then even then it's like well that's still not less valid because they're not married yeah but then am I still obligated to invite them to like a birthday party it's very interesting and what if you don't know the partner yeah you know I think it's a little weird that the friend is so offended yeah because it's like why are you mad that your friend wants to hang out with just you like if you want to plan a group thing that can be separate but not every single thing in life has to be a group thing yeah with your husband that too I wonder if there's a little insecurity there on her part and she's like well why don't you want my husband to come it's like it has nothing to do with your husband Mm -hmm. like I just have a limit right and she made it very clear she doesn't have a lot of space like I don't think she did anything wrong yeah Yeah, I think not the asshole, but it did get me thinking about all the things that when you're like planning a guest list and you're like, well, do I have to invite that other person if I invite them? I hate that. And I I literally hate it. And I'm going to stop doing that. I don't even care. I want to. We both need to. (laughs) Yeah, but I feel like I feel like I don't have like I feel like in the past I did. There would be a lot of people where I'd be like, oh, I feel bad if I don't ask them. And I'm like, if I think that anymore if I'm like oh well if I'm inviting them I have to invite them that I think is going to be my radar on I don't actually like this person or like (laughs) I'm not actually close friends with this person yeah because if you say oh I have to invite them it's like "Mm, do you do you want them there I was thinking more about this because you and I talked about it I think one of the times we filmed a bonus app not on camera but like we had a whole talk about it and then I talked about it kind of more recently with other friends of mine and I've just been reflecting on this concept and I do think it's like an old-fashioned thing like yeah I think about my parents and I feel like they and like that generation thinks that way more than we do of like well I have to invite this person if I'm having this event or like with weddings like well you have to invite great aunt blah 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 if you're inviting blah 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 you know what I mean like I think in our generation it's just people view friendships so differently and like but it does still exist but I see what you're saying yeah it's like definitely on a greater scale I feel like for older people especially when it comes to weddings and big events like that but yeah it is down to like a friendship level and like even like just hanging out after work like a happy hour or like a night out or having a small gathering at your house like it doesn't have to be a huge event but even those times where you're like oh well if I invite them gotta invite them and it's like we don't gotta do anything (laughs) like and also and you might hurt feelings but that's the price you pay yeah and I feel like another thing is like if I knew that I was being invited places because somebody else was and the person hosting was like oh well if I invite them I have to invite Kelly I'm like oh you don't need to invite me anywhere yeah like I will have something else to do yeah I don't need to go like I don't even I just genuinely hope that I don't have any friends like that or I haven't been attending Same, any, actually. like <laughs> you, you, you almost never think about it from the other end you know? right right because you're like when you think about it in your life it just annoys you but then if you think about it you're like wait am I getting invited places because somebody feels like they have to invite me ick I hope not that's the worst feeling because it's like why would you want to go to that like no it's fine and you can also still respect so like let's say my friend of a friend or whatever who knows was like oh I'm having a birthday party and if I invite this mutual friend I feel like I have to invite Kelly I can still have lots of respect for that person and still be like no you don't have to invite me like I don't it doesn't necessarily like it doesn't make them a bad person it doesn't make them rude or I don't know like I think that you just don't have to invite everyone you know to everything and it's also like a level of friendship too like I have never said that about actual friends of mine 
Well, um, well, no, I guess that's not a good or like friend. Like there are tiers of friends. There are so tiers of friends. Like, that like could be a friend, but not like a really close friend that you tell all of your secrets to. Like, do you have anyone that you're just like they're in your friend, one of your friend groups, but you're not necessarily super close with, I guess. But they're still a friend. But you have that feeling of like, well, do I have to invite them if I'm inviting these other people in the friend group? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. I guess it's different when you have like a solid friend group. Like I have a very close friend group from high school and we're all very close. It's like five or six people. And whenever somebody has plans, like everyone's invited yeah and it's so welcoming and open with plans and like everything like that there have been times where if I'm having people over my house I'm like I don't have enough beds for this whole group to come so then I'm like oh I feel bad if I only invite one of them but it's not out of like oh I don't want them to come it's more about I don't want to be rude if I just like pick and choose people from this friend group so like that's a thing as well but there have definitely been times where there's like a few one-off people are like mutual friends where there are many times where we hang out in a group but I wouldn't consider them part of my friend group and then it's the verge of like oh well do I invite them do I not and I'm like it is just like kind of sad because it's like you shouldn't feel obligated to invite people to things especially if you're hosting them yeah like it's different if it's like out at a bar like it could be a nice thing to do to just invite the like mutual friend that you're on the fence about but if it's at your house and you're like oh like I just have to invite that person it's like no you don't I feel like that at least for me at least for me that phrase is just telling like for me that phrase like makes me realize how close I am or am not with someone interesting I don't know that I view it as closeness but I do view it as like how like you can have a close I don't even know what I'm trying to say I don't want to say this as in a negative way because I feel very blessed that I'm not part of like one singular friend group and I put all of my eggs into like one friend group's basket in a way yeah like I feel like I have really good friends from different parts of my life but many of them are like one-off friendships so it's hard for me when I have a group gathering to like I do have to be picky and choosy because of like if I lived in a mansion sure everyone's invited have at it but like that's just not the situation I'm in and like if I like I really would love to have another birthday party this year and just like do a house party I feel like that's so like so fun and so easy and no one really does house parties anymore so that would be lit but like I just would have to be so picky and I feel so bad about that yeah But it doesn't mean that I'm not super close with people. It's just like, do I want to make it easy on myself and just have the majority of people be from like one friend group? Okay, I I totally get what you're saying. And I think it, it made me realize what I actually mean. So it's not the like, oh, I have to invite them or I feel bad. It's more like if you don't want to invite someone, but you're like, oh, well, I'm inviting them, but I'm inviting them. But deep down, I don't want them to come. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I kind of am referring to. Okay, I get it. Yeah. 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 Because I do see what you're saying with, like, the different friend groups and stuff and, like, genuinely just not having room for everyone at one time because I also experience that as I do not live in a mansion. No mansions here. (laughs) Not yet. Maybe he'll rent a giant warehouse in the middle of Philadelphia and come one come all that would be very fun (laughs) I would kind of love that we could play like I don't know why when you said warehouse I pictured like throwing water balloons full of paint at each other wait okay ice skating (laughs) first option water balloons full of paint second option I do think that'd be fun maybe at a skate park outside oh you're right maybe i'll celebrate skate parks are usually pretty nice i don't know if they're gonna (laughs) an abandoned skate park (laughs) yeah abandoned um but yeah i think like without getting into all of the little nuanced things that we could bring up situations i guess is what i meant i definitely have friends that are like i hate to say a package deal but like kind of with other people yeah where it's like if you invite these other people you just feel bad if you're not inviting like this one other person or two other people i know but i i hate that i know but if you just if you don't do it isn't that such a line in the sand and you're just like because you know on social media again getting back to the social media someone's gonna see that and be like damn like these people were invited and i wasn't when Ugh, in when for me I'm like it's really not that deep like it says nothing about our friendship but you also or like have... what if it does say something about your friendship though? yeah that's what I mean like <laughs> like I don't hate you I'm just closer with these people and like that's who I'm hanging out with but to me that's not even what it means oh what do you I mean don't know. 
It's so hard to put it into words. <laughs> also, some people aren't good in group settings and you and you end up having to like babysit them almost. Yeah. Or like pay extra attention to them to make them feel comfortable. And so that comes into play too. I love friends that can just be thrown into any Same. friend group Same. and you don't need to like go out of your way to make sure they're feeling okay because you know they're just able to do their own thing. Even if doing their own thing is sitting peacefully in silence and just like enjoying the yeah. vibe yeah for sure yeah I feel like this is a this is a very hard thing to talk about because it is like so nuanced and every relationship is so different it's so relationship based yeah. yeah and I might listen back to this and be like that's not what you even mean I know same now I'm scared I know <laughs> but I feel like it's okay that we're talking this out and then in the future when we're listening back or if we say something on a future episode that's completely different than what we're saying now I don't know. I feel like that's okay. Like, we're just talking it out and figuring out how to put this, like, feeling into words. Yeah, because also as I've gotten older, I'm so wise at 28. (laughs) But, like, not every friendship, this is what I've realized, has to be the most deep, meaningful, like, you have these life talks kind of friendship. Like, you can have surface level friendship that's good for you and like you're both on the same page like I have friends where I'm like I feel like we know what we are to each other which is like we hang out every once in a while if I'm not invited to their thing or they're not invited to my thing zero percent offense taken and it's a beautiful thing yeah I think what's tricky is when you're both not on the same page yes totally and sometimes you just don't know so that's where it's like hard I hope I'm not not on the same page as someone who I feel like I'm best friends with um actually my best friend's boyfriend the other day disrespected me he's also one of my best friends but i'm not gonna name names so let's call this couple karen and ryan okay karen's my best friend karen ryan said oh yeah kelly and karen are pretty close who the hell are you <laughs> who are men. you men <laughs> And I can't wait for Karen to listen to this (laughs) and hear what her little boyfriend said. I will end you. I'm just kidding. I will ruin your life. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) But yeah, I feel you. I feel you. It would it would suck to come to the realization that you're like, oh wait, we're just not as close as I thought we were. And you find that out the hard way by not. I have though. You know what? I have. (laughs) Like, there has been people where I'm like, oh, well, just hearing from the way that you talk about me behind my back and the way that I talk about you behind your back. That's tough. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, we are just, we're not on the same page at all. just gave me a pit. And I'm like, but you know what? I'm not friends with that person anymore. Yeah. And my life has never been better. Mm. So like, it's okay to like be friends with someone for a certain amount of time and then realize like, oh, I wasn't as close as we thought we were. Yeah. And then move on. That's so interesting. Cause there are some people, some of my best friends where I'm like, I don't utter a bad thing about you ever yeah. to anyone. Yeah. And you just gotta hope that that's the same way in reverse. Dude, I feel <laughs> the same way. Like that person that I'm talking about right now, this was was like one of my closest friends and I never said a bad thing Mm -hmm. about this person even when she would do shitty things to me Mm -hmm. that I'm like I would never do that to you like the excluding or like the just making me wait on you like I would never do that to a friend and then once I realized it I was like oh you're just like not a great person I guess yeah so maybe it was more of that than the like we're not as close as I thought we were but I don't know. I, I just think that when you when you take people out of your life that aren't serving you and if you're feeling like I would just hang out with them. And then every time I left, I'd be like, oh, my God, I talked too much. Yeah. I was annoying. Like, are they mad at me? Do they like me? And if they didn't invite me somewhere, I'd be like, oh, what the hell? And also, this is a friend for a long time. It wasn't yeah. like someone I just met like a month or even a year ago. But I wouldn't get invited. And I'm like, oh, you're you just don't want to hang out with me. Because if you wanted to hang out with me, you would have invited me. And so, like, I'm not going to be friends with you anymore. Right. And in that situation, that person, in my opinion, turned out to just not be a great person or friend. But I'm Mm -hmm. sure that's happened to me in settings where, yeah, I'm thinking of a friend that I had in high school that I thought we were, like, super close friends. And then we just, like, drifted a little too easily for someone who's actually your close friend. Yeah. And I'm like, if we were actually best friends, we just wouldn't have drifted in that way. Yeah. No. So looking back, that was 
a good example of someone who I don't love them actively, but like I love the idea of them. I respect them. Like I wish this person actually nothing but the best. And if I ran into them, I'd be so excited to see them. But yeah, I, we probably just weren't as close as I thought we were. Yeah. And that's fine too. Like it's just such a hard line. It's fine, but it's just hard when you have to learn that the hard way. Yeah. And you have to learn, oh, I've been extremely loyal to you. Like even when things have gone awry in our friendship, I have not said a thing to anyone. And then to find out that they were saying all these things about you. Oh, yeah. I haven't had that happen. I don't know the last time that's happened to me, but I just, I don't know. Sometimes in my most paranoid moments, I'm like, moments. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be so loyal to some of these people. No, I think about that too. So that girl that I was just saying, like, I still have lots of respect for. I feel like that was not the same situation. Yeah. The other friend that I was talking about, it is that situation mm-hmm. where I'm like, I would have never said that stuff about you. And it's just shocking that I was so loyal to you. And then this is how you talk about me behind my back how did you find out though because sometimes you could also just never find out and your friends want a fake b <laughs> if i say if i say how i found out it is going to be uh, obvious who oh, okay. it is so i feel like i can't off I air can't say, <laughs> yeah like people would be like a hundred percent it's absolutely this person so I don't want to say how I found out but let's just say they were they were talking to someone and saying these things about me to someone who was very very close to me oh and I'm like why are you saying this to this person that is very close to me and like you're trying to make me look like a bad person Mm -hmm. to this other person I'm so sorry I'm being so vague because I just don't care to like okay I don't know this is like I shouldn't like call people by name but yeah 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 just such a messy situation and I'm like I wouldn't say that to anyone regardless of who they were let alone someone who has such a close relationship with you right crazy just piss me off no I know yeah but I I don't know I don't want to like lose the part of me that's extremely loyal either because I think that's a gift and not everyone is like that (laughs) sometimes I'm on the um receiving end of someone talking crap about someone and I'm like oh like oh yeah you're not you're not that loyal of a friend oh my god yeah and like I pride myself on being loyal like I just I I feel like there were times where I wasn't always so loyal so I've tried to make up for it in my adult years oh um because you know it's called growing <laughs> look it up <laughs> but I don't want to lose that because I think it's being a loyal friend is a gift but at the same time I don't want to be mistaken for a naive person oh yeah so it's such a hard line you guys this topic is nuanced it's like that Rihanna <laughs> song where she says you mistake my kindness for weakness yes yeah the kindness for weakness thing. And I, I feel like that is mistaken when someone is a bad person. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> like, I'm not... I'm going to I'm gonna talk very highly of myself for a second. As you should. I, I consider myself, or at least I try to be a kind, like, welcoming person. And I try to see the best in people. And I don't think I'm out here mistaking kindness for weakness. Yeah. Like, I don't look at people that are kind and think weak yeah or like oh they're easy to manipulate like I just never think that about someone so I'm like I think it takes a certain kind of person to mistake kindness for weakness totally and also I do want to disclaim everything I just said by saying I definitely have talked crap about people in the past like five years of my life like I'm not saying I'm never out here like ever venting about something yeah you know what I mean like this is not that I'm saying if you consistently find yourself talking bad about someone maybe ask yourself maybe they just shouldn't be in my life anymore yes I agree (laughs) because it's hard to be on the receiving end of that and just feel like I don't like it makes me feel icky almost yeah I've definitely been with people and they are talking shit on like all of their friends and then I'm like (laughs) I'm like, I'm that meme where she's like doing the algebra on the thing. I'm like, okay, well, if you're saying X, Y, and Z about every other person in your life, I mean, you got to be saying something about me and what is it? So I'm like, that makes me feel weird. But I do think there's a difference between venting about situations that affect you and then just gossiping or talking shit on someone. So if someone is being really annoying or rude to you or a situation happened that affects your life and your friendships, I I think that if you were venting about that situation, that's not necessarily talking shit. I think you're allowed to do that. I feel like talking shit would be 
be like if we were sitting here talking about someone else's friend of a friend and all the stuff they're going through and us just harping on their gossip so much I feel like that would be talking shit not like oh this person in my life was such a bad friend to me and I'm over it yeah in my opinion that's not talking shit that's just like venting and talking about your own life I feel like when you're when you or your very close friends or family are not involved in this person or this situation at all, that's more like talking shit and gossiping. Yeah, Yeah. I don't love that. Yeah. It's hard to not get caught up in sometimes, but I have been in situations where I'm kind of sitting there like, I don't love that this is what we're talking about right now. 100%. Or just like harping on the same story that happened like 10 years ago in high school or college or whatever. And you're like, okay, like we've all moved on. We can move on on now. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) Please. Although, so I am one to sit with my grade school friends and yeah. talk about grade school like it's my job and it never gets old and the stories and the even even our high school stories like they are the most entertaining stories and I will tell them again a thousand more times I but hope that's like reminiscing that's right, not like that's true no that's true that's true. yeah 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 that's reminiscing okay it's... I feel like we said it <laughs> we said it and we've said it I'm gonna edit this back and be like and what did you say and what <laughs> did you mean by that because I don't think I don't know if I'm making sense I just have so many thoughts and so do I you're I right love, yeah sorry what were you gonna say no I just love talking about this stuff like yeah me friendship too. and like social media it is so nuanced and I know right now we're talking about it in very broad topics of discussion but I do think it'd be fun to do more nuanced like literal examples but I feel like we needed this first yeah to like get this off our chest and it's hard to to talk about little literal little examples from your own life without being so obvious who they're about yeah and i'm not trying to talk shit i yeah practice what we preach darling exactly but we will be doing that off camera i'm just kidding <laughs> true should we do one am i the asshole story for good measure we'll end sure. on it okay Am I the asshole for saying I don't want to plan my friend's birthday after not being invited to her wedding? Okay, so I first met my friend Jane, female 29, studying abroad. We were really good friends during our travels, and after college, we actively stayed in touch, visiting each other in our respective different cities. I met her boyfriend Bob, now husband, when they first started dating, and have met her college friends and parents. Bob and Jane decided to move to my city right before COVID, so during lockdown, we were in each other's bubbles. We've celebrated each other's birthdays, we've had Friendsgiving, Christmas parties together, etc. 2021, Bob and Jane got engaged in August, and when they came back, I threw them an engagement party. I bought her this wine glass that said wedding planning wine glass, and every time she used it, she would text me a photo of her with it. In 2022, I threw Bob a 30th birthday party, but then this was also the first year I wasn't invited to her birthday. I had texted Bob asking what the plan was, and he told me they were going out of state for her birthday. However, on Instagram, I saw them posting pictures of them renting a cabin with some friends, so I felt awkward. Then I wasn't invited to the bachelorette party. I didn't find this too big a deal because Jane has some really close childhood friends and sorority friends, but then nothing about the wedding. The wedding happened this May, and it was a big wedding, like 200 people probably, and I wasn't invited. I was really hurt to say the least, but I didn't say anything. I just tried to move on. I haven't talked to them since before the wedding. They didn't wish me a happy birthday birthday and they couldn't attend my birthday shindig because they were out of town. I'm noticing that if I don't reach out to either of them, they don't reach out to me at all. Now Bob has reached out and asked me to plan Jane's birthday party because he says I'm the best at planning these things. What? And I told him I was hurt about not being invited and he said, well, we had a space limit. Don't make it a big deal. We want you to be at her birthday. I don't really want to do it and I don't really feel a desire to be friends with them. Am I being a petty asshole? My jaw is on the floor. Me too. Based on everything she said no you're not but like we just said throughout the episode there are so many nuances to these things yeah. and maybe you're an annoying <laughs> just kidding <laughs> but maybe they find you just like a pest I don't know but like I think that there's a possibility that they don't find OP a pest they just maybe have other people in their lives that they want to be closer to or maybe they just got to the point with OP where they're like this person just isn't our best friend yeah. I think it's absurd that they're asking her to plan the birthday party right like I would agree with everything you said however they never want to hang out with her unless she reaches out first and to not be invited to a wedding and be told it was a space issue when it was 200 people 
Yeah. That is not a space issue. That was a very clear message. And if I were you, I would, I just wouldn't like reach out anymore at all. Yeah. I would take it as a sign that it's a friendship phase out. You are being phased out. I hate to break it to you. But I also don't necessarily think that they are bad people. Like, I'm just thinking of someone who I knew for a long time that unintentionally, I feel like I kind of phased her out. Like, I didn't even mean to. But like now looking back, I'm like, oh, I never see this girl. And we did used to hang out a lot. So I'm like, I don't think she's a bad person. I don't think she's annoying. I just am so much closer with so many other people. But was she texting you to hang out all the time? No. Because I feel like that's the difference here is like the girl is confused as to why she wasn't invited to the wedding and like why she's always the one reaching out first. I think there can be a mutual phase out and that's totally copacetic. But when it's a situation like this and you have one person who's like none the wiser. That's true. Yeah, it is. It is kind of like a hate to break it to you thing. That's why I kind of feel like the couple just like finds her to be annoying maybe or like there's something maybe there's something that happened that she didn't say. I also don't necessarily think it's because this person is annoying. Like I've met people in my life that I'm like, oh yeah, we were friendly for like this. Like let's say I met them in college and I'm like, yeah, we were friendly during this time. I don't dislike them. I don't find them annoying. I don't I don't find anything wrong with them, but I don't want them to be my best friend. And I'm not going to put any further energy into this relationship, even though maybe when we were in college, we were friends. But are those people asking you to hang out all the time? Okay, that's a good point. Yes, I guess that's what I'm forgetting here. Like, that's just like where I'm like hung up because otherwise, yes, I agree. But like in this instance, I feel like there's just like a piece of the puzzle we're not missing or we're not getting. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, I just think like maybe they have other closer friends that they prioritize and they just don't want to be your friend. And she's just got like, yeah, just been forgotten along the way. Yeah. Which sucks. I mean, it sucks, but like it happens. Like I have so many friends that I was friends with in the past. And yeah, maybe I did ask them to hang out or maybe they I don't know. Maybe they asked me, but we're just not friends anymore. It doesn't mean they're annoying. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. But yeah, I guess that that is what I'm forgetting is like she is asking them to hang out. But she thinks they're like her best friends and they just don't think she's theirs unless the the wife randomly wants a 30th birthday thrown by her, which is like so weird. It's such a. T- it's such but a it's I honestly think it's even weirder because OP doesn't even say that these people are her best friends but she thinks that they're close enough to be invited to the wedding so there are people that maybe they're not my best friend but I would still probably invite them to my wedding I feel like to not get invited to a wedding when you expect to like you really got to be on a different page yeah that's even if tough. you don't think that they're your best friend it's like I I think I'm saying this in the most confusing way ever I don't think so okay but it's like like you can have an understanding that you are friends with someone but you're not their best friend yeah so it's not necessarily that she thinks that these people are her best friends but I feel like it says a lot like these people are basically saying to her you're not friends with us at all yeah to not be invited to the wedding for a big wedding too right when you once and COVID wasn't that long ago like they said they were in COVID bubbles together and did birthday stuff together yeah so it's like how do you go from that to not getting a wedding invite right in a span of two years i mean maybe the people just have other friends like i don't know i don't i don't know something just is off to or me. yeah maybe they just don't <laughs> like her personality that much but like does that mean they think Tough she's annoying pill. i feel bad because i don't want to say that this girl is annoying because there has been people in my life that i knew for a short time that i don't think they're annoying but i'm like i just don't care to be friends with you in life and we will never be friends because of that but you're a great person you're not annoying like you don't suck you're not a pest but we're just not friends but don't you think in those situations because I've had those too but it's like it's a mutual like feeling of like we're both just not gonna acknowledge the fact that we're growing apart but we are kind of growing apart and nothing okay. happened yeah but maybe it's just it like weirder when mutually it's happening right okay okay but it's it's awkward when it's like one person really thinks they're like really close friends and they have this unbreakable bond and then the next thing you know you're seeing pictures on social media of like a wedding that you were not Yeah, I think that this would have been fine if these people didn't ask her to plan the party. 
Like if they did all of these things, all of the evidence, and then this friendship kind of just like fizzled out and died. I I really don't think that makes any party a bad person. Like it just happens in life. But I think these people are not good people because they're asking her Mm -hmm. to do them favors. After all this happened. After all this. Yeah. So bizarre. Like Like, after. What goes on? After trying to distance yourself for a year or a year and a half, then you go back to this person and you're like, oh, by the way, plan a party for me. Yeah. If you don't want to be friends with her, don't be friends with her. Mm -hmm. But that means that you're not friends with her. Mm -hmm. You can't be asking her for favors after the deed has been done. Yeah. You can't be yo-yoing friendships. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're friends with someone for two years and then you don't get invited to their wedding. Well, no, that's not. I was going to say, like, the friendship's over, but, like, that's not necessarily true either. Yeah. That's not, it's nuanced. No. I know. that's. It's so tough to make, like, a strong declaration with these stories. I know. There was an edit. I don't know if it matters. It says, to clarify about Bob's birthday party, Jane asked me to help plan it. That was the last time I've seen them in person, March 2022. They reached out to her two months ago that was when this post was from oh i would never talk to these people again yeah no what i would block them and just be completely done with them because that's over a year you haven't talked and now yeah because it sounds like the couple kind of made up their mind along the way of like we're gonna phase this person out and that's fine but don't a year later come back around and ask her to plan a birthday party for you yeah that's like the audacity maybe all their other friends also fizzled out and they're like well this person's loyal and dumb (laughs) they're mistaking kindness for weakness yes they are bad people they are manipulative people yes wow i'd love to know everyone else's takes on this because maybe are we like missing something i don't think we're missing something but i think my opinion i've already said it but tldr the too long didn't (laughs) read version of it is if the friendship were to have just fizzled out in the way that op said and this couple simply never spoke to her again i don't think anyone would necessarily be in the wrong Mm -hmm. but because they did all that and then came back and they were like by the way can you plan my party that makes them manipulative and mean people with ulterior motives i really think their other friends left them in the dust perhaps maybe and they have no one else and they're crawling back to you and this is their way don't give in and that's manipulative and i don't like it i don't like it one bit i wonder what everyone's sign is in this little triad (laughs) rising (laughs) and moon (laughs) one of the top comments was tell bob that there are obviously around 200 people that they're closer to than they are to you so he should ask one of them to plan the birthday party burn mic drop sorry that's honestly a very valid thing to say yeah that's not even petty it's just facts agreed (laughs) well i feel good about ending the podcast on a cold hard am i the asshole Mm -hmm. case me too i want my oatmeal now yeah we're gonna go eat dinner and then we're gonna film another episode (laughs) we'll be on one by that time oh yeah baby hot chocolate (gasps) should we yes keep the screaming i'll try i'm gonna blow out people's headphones good (laughs) thank you so much for listening to our podcast please tell us how you feel about this stuff i know it's very very nuanced but also if you have any personal experiences that could be fun too because then we could talk about your personal experiences dm us with your stories yes or subreddit (gasps) subreddit yeah Mm -hmm. i like the idea of a subreddit Mm -hmm. i think it's fun okay thank you for listening we love you we appreciate you and we'll see you in the next one bye